Hi, Ronan and Mia. How are you? Good. How are you? Not bad. Yeah. So I saw the film last night and then I was up until two in the morning. Just I couldn't sleep. Number one, <laughs> <laughs> the whole my lights were on. And then number two, it got me down like this rabbit hole of looking up the actual killer's case, which yeah. I imagine the both of you had to do also. Um, so for those that don't know, tell them about the movie and about um, the characters that you play. Um, man, we've had to explain the synopsis so many times. Uh, no, no, it's fine. I just, I just want to make it fresh. Um, so Smiley Face Killers uh, is, is, is a group of people that stalk uh, young men, specifically uh, young, athletic, uh, quote unquote, handsome men. Um, and uh, they stalk these young men and then do this weird sacrificial thing to them and then end up murdering them. Uh, and then I play Jake Graham, who ends up being their newest sort of target. Uh, and then Jake is your sort of normal college student, has a wonderful girlfriend, has wonderful friends, uh, but he's actually dealing with depression and there's a lot going on under the surface that you wouldn't know uh, meeting him. Um, so we're balancing uh, all of that along with being physically stalked by something. So it's very much a mental and physical sort of, um, it's a, a balance of, of, uh, of what's going on with, uh, with Jake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, for my character, I play Karen, um, who's, who plays Ronan's girlfriend in it. And yeah, that, that was kind of, I always feel like she is the kind of character of the audience. I mean, she's seeing, right. we're seeing him through her eyes in these scenes together. And um, she kind of is, and Ronan said this before, but um, his one grounded person that he's, you know, so close with. And so, yeah, doing these scenes and having to talk to him in a certain way and, you know, be there for him and love him, but see him suffering. And mm -hmm. so she's trying to help him without pushing him away. So it's kind of like a, a back and forth there. That's really nice. Yeah, yeah. I thought you both delivered such incredible performances grounded in reality, because how often do we get to see severe depression displayed on screen, and especially in young men? And then we rarely get to see the supportive girlfriend um, and we don't know what they're going through, that they feel so alone, no matter how much support they provide. It's really like an alone um, experience. And I thought you both conveyed that so well. So can you talk a little about the dynamic that you built in this film and maybe some research that you went into uh, depression and severe depression? Um, I, I, I know some people in my life who, who suffer from it. I also, I, you know, I, I liken it to, uh, you know, I have some issues in, with addiction in my family and, um, and, and friends I've known. And, um, you know, there's, there's a way you have to put yourself in that person's shoes who you're talking to and be completely void of judgment. You have to, and then exploring yourself where that judgment's coming from. And, you know, it's like, it's a disease like anything else. And, it's really hard to understand unless you've you've experienced it and the only way is to kind of talk to people know what that feels like and to know what they need in that moment which is not um just feel better just get over it and in this culture of like i would say like currently i feel like we're in this culture of toxic positivity uh on instagram and stuff where all of these messages are you know everything's great like you know, no, you know, I always see this bumper sticker in LA, it says no bad days. And I always am so troubled by that because I'm like, right. that's not normal. Like you should, you should have, you should have bad days sometimes and that's okay. And um, so I really, I mean, Brett did an amazing job writing these scenes where it's like, you know, I have to be there for him, but also try and drive him to make the right choice to keep seeing his doctor, to keep on his meds without telling him what to do as someone who isn't experiencing what he's experiencing. So it was, it was such, it was so interesting to um, rehearse with Ronan and, and Ronan did such a great job playing this and not playing a stereotype or an idea. I mean, he gave it depth. And so it made the scenes really 
fun to act to it was all about the other person and checking in with him and seeing how he's reacting to what I'm doing and saying and can I push it a step further can I can I tell him he should be on his meds is he going to go off the deep end if I say this so it made it made the scenes really fun mm -hmm. and Ronan? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I knew that this would be a, um, a, a sensitive sort of topic to, um, to dive into. And, and, and the thing I wanted to do the most was just, just do it at, at least, at least any kind of justice and, and not, you know, and not, uh, play a cliche of someone dealing with, um, with depression and, 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 uh, and addiction and, you know, I, I did a lot of research about what these kind of people are going through and, and, and who they are, because there's not sort of this like one example of what someone looks like or what someone is like who's dealing with depression or addiction. Um, it could really be anybody. Um, and, and a lot of the times you would never know, you know, that I, th I think that's the tricky thing about depression is it's, it's, so, it's something that people don't usually share with a lot of people unless it's someone they really trust whether it's a girlfriend or a family member or a best friend um and i think that's what jake was going through he he has a very small circle in his life and a very small uh group of people that he trusts um and is able to sort of be himself uh fully and and you know i i do think karen is his one and only safe space. I think even with his best friend played by Garrett, I think there's still a little bit of like, you know, I have to be like this, like cool dude, play soccer yeah. and like, you know, this like playful guy. But I think, I think deep down, he just wants to be himself with, with, with Karen. And I think that's why the relationship is so beautiful. And, um, and then, you know, as, as speaking to a lot of people that, that, that deal with depression and, and, and just making sure that I played it realistically and, and, and authentically and not, you know, over the top. Um, and, you know, whether that was, you know, sort of, I like leaning into the physicality of a character. I like leaning into sort of how, um, like what, what makes them tick and, and what goes on in their head. So from throughout the entire shoot, it was sort of like this inner monologue that mm -hmm. is going on in, in Jake's head and, and what is actually going on in here and how he's actually portraying himself out here. You know, it's, it's a really, it's a difficult balance to try to find. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I hope I did it justice and I hope people are, might, might see themselves on screen through this and, and just know that, you know, they're, they're not alone and, and, and to not feel any sort of shame about it or, 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 or feel, you know, like a, like an outcast or an outsider. It's, it's, it's extremely common and, and everyone, every, every kind of person goes through it. Um, yep. So I'm glad, I'm glad that they touched on that in this film. Mm -hmm, for sure. Um, so were either of you true crime or horror people going into this? Yeah. I, yeah. I've, it's weird. I've done my fair share of horror films. For, for some reason, it just keeps just keeps coming into my <laughs> into my world. Um, I, I did a couple of indie horror films, and then did a TV show that was, you know, a, a, right. like a throwback to '80s horror. So I don't know why it keeps coming back up, but I I enjoy it. You know, I. I, uh, I've watched horrors my whole life, you know, like I, I still am deeply terrified of Michael Myers and, 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 and Jason and all those classics. But then I'm also really intrigued by sort of like this new wave of horror that we have, whether it be like It Follows or, or Hereditary or, um, or Get Out or um, oh. Us, like these movies are so epic in, in the sense that they were able to transform the horror genre and make it something uh, unique and, 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 um, and, and new. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I love everything about it. Um, and, you know, hopefully there's some more in the future. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't, I never really got into the true 
crime thing that's happening here uh, with all my friends with podcasts and stuff. Um, I did listen to the Dirty John podcast, which was fascinating. Um, and I, I love horror films, but I get very scared like you. Um, so but I, I love kind of what Ronan was saying, this new wave, because they're so they're so cinematically beautiful and mm -hmm. the acting's really great. And it's kind of, to me, a throwback to like the seventies, like Rosemary's yes. baby and, and those kinds of quiet, like our film is, is a quiet uh, vibey horror film. And I, I really, really like that and dig that. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious, do you both believe that there are smiley face killers or do you think that they were drownings? I'm so curious. I do, I do. After after looking into it and after watching a documentary that came out, I believe last year, it's also called Smiley Face Killers. Um, yeah. I just think it's too coincidental, you know, and, and, and the sort of the type of young man that was found, it's, it, it, just, it just seems very strange, you know, right. they, yeah. they all sort of fall into the same category, these like young athletic men in college um so yeah and you know there there are such wackos out there um i i wouldn't put it past uh you know a, a, another cult group it's not like we've never had cult groups before who you know prey on humans um unfortunately i think it, it was true i hope they're not around anymore um that's for sure i hope i hope they don't watch this movie and are like hmm, we should get back to work uh, so yeah it's 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 disturbing uh, you know i i hope with all my heart that it, it didn't happen and it is uh you know just a coincidence but it's sort of hard to think that it was just a coincidence yeah i'm kind of kind of with ronan after watching some stuff and seeing it's kind of hard to believe it's a coincidence ronan posed a theory earlier that i actually think is a possibility that it was like a cut it could have maybe not been the same person or group doing it but maybe the copycat crime mm -hmm. thing yeah. where yes. people heard about it and saw it and did it um but yeah either way just terrible terrible and kind of horrifying if it was happening it just completely yeah. went unsolved yeah yeah and finally what have you both been watching or reading or listening to lately that you're really into mm. So, I... <laughs> sorry, Mia, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Um, so I think one of the most epic things I've seen in a very long time is uh, Mark Ruffalo's new show on HBO. Oh, yeah. Um, yep. I know this much is true. Is, is, that, yeah. is that how you say it? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, first of all, he's playing two people. Uh, one of them is a paranoid schizophrenic and uh, another one is sort of your like blue collar regular guy uh, and right. and physically he transformed. I think one, one character was like 30 pounds heavier um, and the other one was like Mark Ruffalo the way we know him. And, and the, 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 the performances, it, it's like, I can't get over it. I really think it's one of the most special performances in a very long time. Um, and you know, I, the award shows are whatever, but I, I am glad that he was, he was, uh, he was acknowledged, and I think he ended up winning the the Emmy and the Golden Globe yeah. for it. Um, yeah. But I've just never been moved like that by a performance, especially on on television, uh, in a very long time. And I, I think one of the biggest things for me is that most of the film is really long close-ups, and that's sort of a dream for an actor when you could just, 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 just do it for. A very long time and, and just let the camera roll and and the close-ups in that film there it's just like it's so it's it's unreal I, I yeah I was very moved by that show so yeah I haven't watched that yet I've been dying to watch it. it's so funny you bring that up because I was gonna say I, I'm like just the biggest film nerd and I tend to uh watch watch my old old movies <laughs> more than more than current <laughs> ones sometimes um and I I like to rewatch favorites, which is kind of a bad mm -hmm. habit, but um, I, I rewatched Adaptation lately, uh, the, oh, wow. recently, and it's kind of funny you said that because, you know, Nicolas Cage is playing, playing <laughs> it, you know, himself and his brother, and I just thought it was so brilliant because I kind of went on a whole internet hole um, 
about Char I've been in a very big Charlie Kaufman mode and mm -hmm. um, how he was trying to write about the orchid thief and adapt that uh, book or article by Susan Orlean, but he was having trouble. So then he made the movie about his struggle with it. And it was just, it's one of the most brilliant films on, um, on 100%. It, it, like just being an artist and uh, I mean, adapting, so to speak, but it, it just, I just thought what a brilliant move on his part to take what's inspiring him in the moment, put that on the page, even though that's not what <laughs> the studio bought, that's not what it was supposed to be about. So that, that was really, and Meryl Streep's obviously amazing in that. Um, yeah. And also reading this book, I just want to mention because it's, it's so brilliant yeah. by Elena Ferrante called My Brilliant Friend. Yes. Um, yes. Well, I'm on the second book now and I know it's an HBO series. I'm going to watch it after, but it, it's maybe one of the best series of books I've, I've ever read. They're, they're really amazing. Wow. I recommend those. Well, Write those down, says, people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just, anyone who's having the book list right now. Yeah, for sure. And now's the time to just take in as much art as possible, for sure. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you for thank your you. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.